Hello guys, and welcome to our second LA vlog. Now, a lot has happened in my life since we last spoke, but here it is. Oh, it's a video. <laughs> How come you never do a still? Do a still. Do one still. It's for the video, Aaron. You're for the video. You're not wrong. Thank you. I have lots of space in my bag for treats if you want them. Aaron and I took a walk in downtown LA. We looked all around at the tall, tall buildings, at the flagrant display of lack of care for a mental illness, and lots of homelessness on the streets. But for the most part, it was a really nice walk. Lots of people, lots of space, lots of lights, lots of bougie areas, right next to very sad, poor areas, and you know, a microcosm of all that life has to offer. Our first stop, historic downtown farmer's market, took a look at all the beautiful California produce, loved every single color, loved that little tiny little yappy dog. And we found some $5 bags of fruits, some of which I've never seen before, and it was truly a delight. I wanted everything, but only had so much room and so much stomach space, so we grabbed a bag of sapote, and we continued on our way. Next stop, the last bookstore. This was a they fantastic visit. Even if you don't like books, the space, the atmosphere, everything is so enjoyable. It's almost like a playful museum for books. The lighting, the setup, the sections, the variety and the selection. I loved it all. It did feel like an amusement park and a tourist spot all in one, and we came away with some really nice books for not a lot of money, and as I like it, old secondhand versions. There was also a one dollar section with some very interesting titles. I did not get any, but I truly enjoyed looking at all of them. You see, you can read some Korean, as long as they read it in Hanzo. <laughs> yeah, that's the only In one addition to books, there was also a vending machine with little art pieces. There were art all over the wall, and I just can't recommend this spot enough. If you're in LA, I think you really have to check this place out. And if you love books, it's a non-negotiable. then went off to France and Grand Central Market, but we did hit it around prime time in the early afternoon. It was a lot of lunch crowding. Pretty, pretty hot days here in LA when we went, so Aaron spotted McConnell's ice cream. We stopped by, we went for a double scoop. Naturally, I had trouble picking the flavors, but eventually we decided. Anytime there's lemon, Aaron can't resist, and Marionberry, truly a West Coast delight. As for me, if I see Earl Grey or coffee in ice cream form, I'm gonna wanna try it. Aaron thought the flavor combos were a little bit weird, but I really, really like them both. We've got uh, Earl Grey and shortbread cookies on top, and lemon Marionberry on bottom. The texture was mm. on point. Oh, big chunks of cookie in that. I think it's a little bit of a confusing flavor. The shortbread cookie flavor is very strong, and so the Earl Grey-ness seems just sort of like a subtle afterthought. But it tastes amazing. It's just a little confusing. Mm. I like the Earl Grey. It's like really mild and sweet, but mostly creamy. 
The ice cream texture is light, but not fluffy. It doesn't really have much of a chew to it, but it is kind of like sticky and caramelly. I like that flavor a lot. Is that yogurt? Not sure. It tastes like yogurt. I love it. It's really refreshing, that one. The berry flavor is nice and tart. A little bit of fresh fruitiness and floralness. And then that yogurt and the ice cream base is so nicely rich and tangy. What I love most about both of these flavors is they're just not that sweet. They're really nicely balanced, really cooling. They're still dessert, but they don't feel like a cavity. You like the bottom flavor more? Yeah, today I do. There you go. After the ice cream, I went to check out a store that had all these dried goods, lots of beans, some dried shrimp, a cute little pug, some cacao seeds, something called moro seeds, which I don't even know what they are. Lots of good deals, lots of variety, and this turned out to be one of my favorite spots that we came upon in LA. I went back another time on another day because of how much I loved it. Whenever I see bulk items like this, it truly sings to my heart. The rest of the market seemed really great. We took a walk around, but because it was so busy, we really did not stay and try anything else. I'd get a Michelada if it wasn't so crowded. There were just too many people, too many bodies, and you know how we all feel right now about that. Aaron was definitely a little bit bummed because we really wanted to go to Egg Slut, but the line was intense. So we decided we were just going to move on to our next destination and come back the next day. Aaron and I continued our walk on to Little Tokyo. There's a Kino Kunia here and that market we're going to now, which I remember that was the entrance when I came here last, but things are different now. Wild times here in LA. It's so sunny. It was a lovely, lovely, very too sunny day, and we went into a supermarket store that had all the snacks, all the condiments, all the teas, and all of everything that is good in life. Everybody know what that says. You guys know what that says. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. <laughs> this one is the one. You take crunchy garlic over a mala? I think today I would, yeah. I think one of my favorite activities in life is to go through a grocery store and just look at everything. And that we did yeah. right here, right then. Is there any tea in this, June, or is it just rice? It's just rice. We could eat this as a snack, I bet. Maybe pour some chili oil on that. Uh. To the tune of Hall and Oats, which we cannot play back, unfortunately, because copyright laws. Old Japanese samurai lady on a plastic horse. That is the most Japanese thing yeah. I've ever seen. I'm gonna make myself into my boshi kombu drink. There you go, that. They look like fries. My favorite find of the day, some discounted snacks. They are like really super crunchy rice crackers basically, but truly, truly a treasure find because they were a multi-pack of different kinds of snacks all for a dollar. lots of drinks and it was the first time that I saw canned bubble tea. I really wanted to have it but it had hydrogenated fats in it which I was like maybe not. Hydrogenated fats really turned me off. Lots of liquor that I was interested in but unfortunately way too heavy and way too liquidy to take back with me in a carry-on. Aaron got his favorite ice cream sandwich that has wafer encasing all around and we checked out full of snacks.
June, I love the wafer ice creams. Mm. Triple layer wafer chocolate shell chocolate ice cream. You like it every time. Mm hmm. Never had the chocolate version of this though. What do you think? It's not really that much of a Japanese flavor. No. Well, no, no Japanese flavor, but definitely has that fun construction that I like. I'm ready. Oh, it smells like um, sugar wafer chocolate liqueur caramel. Yeah, it's kind of like really bitter chocolate, like dark chocolate. Right. With a slight hint of milk after it. It's not like milk chocolate, it's like chocolate and milk. Thank you. Thank you. Ice cream. Sugar. Mm -hmm. Is that chocolate as thick as it looks? Yes. It's not bad ice cream. It's creamy. It's smooth. Is it better than our Vianetta? Oh, we're trying. Not better than the one you made, though. We continued our walk through Little Tokyo, went into a bakery, bought nothing, but everything looked good. Dude, what's a British bread? It looks a lot better than actual bread in Britain. Aaron went to a family mart, got nothing. I went to a thrift store, got nothing. But then, we got something. Since 1903. Traditional Japanese pastries, a lot of them mochi based, and a lot of them exactly what I love. Some of them had strawberries, some of them had kinako, some of them had chestnut paste. Man oh man, did they look real pretty. What does it mean? Humanity. Uh, Can you oh. just let me listen to the chimes? At this point in the trip, we were starting to get on each other's nerves a little bit, as predicted. We took a walk into a historic district where we sat down to have our food. Try the ones that you had ordered. Strawberry mochi. So soft and gentle. Absolutely gives way at the gentlest bite. And that strawberry is so juicy. It tastes like strawberry plus strawberry flavor, if that makes sense. This is an incredible snack right here. Instant favorite. Mm. How good was that? I think the strawberry alone was a little bit acidic. And I think the mochi with the red bean paste is a little too sweet. But together in one bite, it's really good. This one is definitely going to be a June, a June snack. Yes. Because I saw chestnut. What else was it? Red bean? As usual? White bean. White bean. Okay, definitely a June snack. Look at that perfect egg wash on top. That is about the most beautiful, golden brown, delicious egg wash I've ever seen. Huh? Look at it. It's perfect. Okay. I like this a lot more than I expected. It reminds me of a of a moon cake. Yes. It's like a Japanese version of a moon cake. I love moon cakes. Yeah. I think you'll like that too. It smells kind of like salted egg yolk. The pastry itself is so porous. I was not expecting that kind of crumb structure where it's so airy and bubbly. The pastry itself is actually quite dry, and I think Aaron likes this way more than I do. 
I wish the pastry were a little bit denser, a little bit fudgier, and I think the sugariness of it is overwhelming whatever taste of chestnut I can get out of this. I do see yellow specks in there that remind me of salted egg yolk, so I wonder if those are specks of salted egg yolk. If you know, let me know down below. Do you like kanako dust too? You know I do. That was a dumb question. Mm -hmm. Oh. I just breathe lightly and it everywhere. This is the least sweet out of the three so far. Um, really natural tasting flavor. What is the green in that? Is it matcha or I don't know. matcha? I don't know. It's probably some kind of like root vegetable. It might be maybe a little light one more, but yeah. This actually, no, the strawberry is easily my favorite. This is okay. my second favorite. All right. Just a lightly sweet, pure natural flavor. This one is the one that I'm most looking forward to. I can smell the kanako right away. It's toasty, it's earthy, it's dirt-like. Mochi looks super soft. Same red bean paste on the inside. The texture. There's almost a little bit more chew to this mochi than the strawberry one. The flavor is tampered by a little bit of that bitterness of the soybean powder. But otherwise, I still think the red bean paste is really overly sweet. What do you think? I didn't notice that. Mochi mochi. Look at all that toasted soybean powder left over. Last one is in mochi, kotobuki which is a cracker, but uh, red bean filled. Basically, I just love, as you can tell from the ice cream sandwich thing, Japanese crackery type stuff. The wafer doesn't really have a crispness to it. You can see the chunks of the red bean in the paste in the middle there. It's very natural. It has like beaniness in terms of texture. I like this red bean paste the most, for sure. Waver is dry, kind of like the stalest ice cream cone you've ever had, but it pairs very, very well with the sweetness of that filling. Just very natural. Exactly what you expect from a good Japanese bakery. You just love it. Camera is good. Sure, you don't want any world famous taquitos? Uh, I'm not feeling wine today, honestly. It's a little hot to be standing in line. This place was on our map as a want to go, so we went. It was on lists of all the places to visit in LA, so we went. And, um, well, I'll just let you see for yourself. Honestly, it was an adorable establishment. It had an old school vibe, cafeteria style, lots of fun little things, including pig trotters, lots of pies, lots of pickled beets. What'd you order? Uh, the beef dip, which is the most popular thing here. In fact, I think my favorite aspect of this establishment is the vibe. The atmosphere was amazing. It felt really cozy. It like kind of reminds me of like a cafeteria yeah, almost. Yeah, cafeteria, bar, New York deli, diner. Like donuts and beet dyed eggs and chips. Yeah, got a lot going on. And beer. Sandwiches, breakfast. Ice cream. Ice cream? Yeah. Vanilla chocolate, strawberry, and chocolate chip. What's that? My first impression is this is not as uh, jam-packed as I hoped. It uh, doesn't look like a very exciting sandwich, I'll be honest. Uh, the photos I saw made it look a little better. How much was this? Ten. Okay. Questionable. Not it's, bad. It's, my first impression is questionable. Okay, the beef is very tasty. The dip is nice. Maybe I should have gone for a double dip or a super white. You didn't go for one? They didn't ask. Oh. You know what this really needs is some like really s strong mustard, like some orange. Well, why don't you mustard. try that orange sauce that I yeah, put on? Hopefully that's something spicy, like horseradish or something. 
That's exactly what it is. Now that's a complete sandwich. Now it's a meal. Oh yeah, the bread is like dry feeling. A little stale maybe? I wouldn't say it is dry. Okay. The beef is kind of like sour. Mm. Like it's been sitting in a flavorless liquid and it almost tastes like it's been leached out of flavor. Uh -oh. Like the beef has been leached of its flavor. Kind of like the meat that we eat after you make your bone broth. Right. It's also a little tough. Like it's falling apart, but the muscle fibers are still really lean. There is already a thin layer of mustard in there, and it's a little bit spicy, but definitely not enough. The bread is kind of soggy in a very pleasant way. It kind of melts into the beef. I mean, it's, I wouldn't pay for this again, right? No, it's not a favorite, I'll be honest. That's a beastly bite, June. It's pretty strong. Horseradish. Good luck. How's it with the horseradish? Yep, that's what, that's what I thought you'd react like. You okay there? I'm glad we got this on camera, <laughs> that reaction. I told you it was powerful. Your face is instantly red, June. You've become purple. Oh my god. It just doesn't stop. <laughs> Take a sip of beer. Okay, it stops. Alright, yeah, it, it starts and stops suddenly. It comes in waves. The spiciness of it is just like... It rolls down your throat and then back up your throat and now it's starting to sear the corner of my lips. It's just like a little tiny baby dragon blowing out from within your sinuses. Um, yeah. Wow, you look like you've been through a ride. <sighs> Cheers. Aroma of melted gumdrop, cotton candy perfume, and guava. Taste of light, naturally flavored flat seltzer with thick body, and you should aerate the fruitiness. Overall, it's a watered down melted gummy soup. Three out of five. It's just not very tasty beef. It really needs the juice and the horseradish, which means there's not much going on here. Disappointing meal? Mildly. Yeah. Sorry, Philippe. I think it's just famous for the vibe, honestly. It's a really cool vibe. Actual yeah. We took a walk through the Chinatown portion of town, but it wasn't very impressive or that exciting. Aaron, is this your favorite song too? Um, hold on, let me listen. However, yeah, it is, definitely. There's always some nice tunes in there. Say that again. I'm a dumb Lao Wai, Mr. Lion. Please forgive me. He just sat on the lion. Nobody sits on the lion. I, is that a thing, though? Do you know that that's a thing? No, but you shouldn't sit on lions, period. Seeing as how we don't drive, we had to wait for the Uber, and that took quite a while. For a city known for cars and traffic and cars hitting the pedestrians. I was very surprised at how long it takes to get an Uber there. Then we headed to a winery and we looked around at their shop where, surprisingly, lots of bottles were very, very affordable. I would actually drink iced wine coffee. I've never had so much fun looking through the gift shop portion of a winery before. Not that I've been to that many wineries. But this one had pretty much everything. Wine, glasses, lip Which balm. one are you leaning towards? Uh, I think the Afternoon Delight. There's more variety here. There's uh, one San Simeon, two Windstream, and a Madalena. Well, these are four San Simeons. Whatever the hell that means. That's disgusting. No, just this. Yeah, just the flight. Let's drink. Afternoon delight. Pinot Grigio. It 
tastes, then you're gonna hear me say this for all the rest of them too. Like wine. Mmm, whiny. I'm just gonna go ahead and apologize for our audio here. Obviously, I'm still not a professional at this. We do not have lav mics, and the quality is pretty shit. Bear with me. Tasting panel magazine. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, June's not a big lineman either, huh? It jabbed me in the back of my throat. Very short. I don't know what you expect. I'm gonna move on to the Chardonnay here. Looks a little bit. Chardonnay. Yellow. Golden. Honey hued. Oh, it smells a little bit more. Um, now, I could let you listen to all of my tasting notes here, all of which I thought tasted pretty mediocre, but I figured since the audio is shit, I'd use this time to tell you guys a little bit about what's happened in my life since we filmed this. This was filmed in September. My mother died in October. It has taken me about six weeks to sort through everything in her house. And um, it's been, it's been a time. I look forward to editing all of these videos, but obviously I'm not the same person I was when we went on this trip. I still look forward to pushing out all of these footages of a time that I enjoyed before mom's passing. And I hope you do too. If I sound a little bit down, that's probably because I am. But life goes on, and I'm happy that I have all of these memories, and hopefully, maybe mom's out there watching somewhere, and maybe she can laugh along at how freaking wasted I got here on some cheap-ass overpriced wine. But it is the afternoon delight. The atmosphere was as harsh as the wine, lots of noise, lots of background chatter, lots of train whistles, and damn it, did I get really tipsy. I started reading my Alan Watts, I started feeling things a little bit too deeply, I started feeling sleepy and very emotional about how Uber drivers don't get paid enough. Um, don't give me wine again, please. We then took a drive back to downtown LA and, still a little bit tipsy, went for some more tacos. When in LA, we gotta do tacos. Tacos non-stop. Yeah, I think we'll get the chimichanga and one or two tacos. I know I want the chorizo, the Sonoran style pork sauce, but I kind of want the tripa too. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, yes, I mean. This is the chiltepin sauce, which June says is kind of uh, dried chili, is that right? It's like a tiny, tiny chili. Tiny, tiny chili. I think. I like tiny chilies because they, uh, the smaller they are, the bigger the flavor. June, describe the smell of this. I have my mask, mask on. Off. It smells like smoked MSG. Okay, you'll like it then. It smells... Oh, you just dipped your tongue right in the thing, didn't you? <laughs> it is smoked MSG. Holy crap. It's so good. It's right, like I'll, I'll lick the lid, not MSG on um, fire. Damn. MSG on fire. Yeah, that's good. It's so good, guys. That's actually what it is. I thought June was crazy, but it is MSG on fire. She's right. Oh, I may wow. be drunk and crazy, but I am always right. She Especially right. when I'm drunk and crazy. I want to eat 
eat this burrito first. Is this a mini one? Yes. That's the chibi chibi changa or something. A mini burrito. Take a bite, June. They It'll have these bird the scallions. They have like a grilled scallion on top. Can I and squeeze I the love... on these tacos while you're doing that? Yes. Okay. You squeeze away, girl. Look, look at it. Look at it. Look at, at this it. first. Is this the intestine you think? I don't know. Look at it! It's perfectly grilled. It's warm, it's toasty, it's floury and carby. Why is your voice so pure to me? I'm drunk! <laughs> Offer five sips, remember. How is it? Is it pork? A what? Is it pork? I, I think it's shredded beef, actually. It was only shredded beef or shredded chicken is my options. Did you see the salsas? I'm so hungry. Look how nice and, and, and vibrant red that is. I wish all burritos were this size. This is like the perfect size for a burrito because what makes a burrito great is that you're eating like a lot of really tasty tortilla. And this one, like June said, is grilled so really well. So tasty. So and there's no fillers. The smaller you make the burrito, the bigger the ratio between tortilla and filling. And this is like the perfect size. Hot yeah. take, the tortilla is the best part of the burrito. Damn. I'm gonna no, try the green sauce. I don't agree with myself. Okay, I, I take doesn't. it back. Oh, the green sauce is so refreshing. It's really good. Is that a whole scallion on top of these tacos? Yeah. Nice. A whole scallion. Aren't you supposed to eat it with the taco? Try the sauces, dude. Is there like green peppers or cactus in here? I don't know. Oh, There's some lot. sort of vegetable. Makes it really delicious. Look at how good that looks. Mm. I'm very hungry, dude. All right, take a bite of this. I'm a burrito girl. I'm a hot sauce guy. They're like little tiny intestines filled with stuffs. And they're kind of crunchy, but also kind of soggy. Ooh. 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 Is that a good ooh? It's like liver, but slightly bitter. Mmm. I love the cabbage that they put in here. Absolutely essential. The crunch, the sweetness, the freshness, the blankness, the juiciness goes really well with the innards of the meat. Flour tortilla. Totally too some like al dente, but like still tender and soft, and your teeth just sink into it. This definitely needs some salsa. In your mouth? <laughs> oh yeah. It's so crunchy. There's so many little crunchy, crunchy pieces. Fried perfection. You can taste that kind of almost charred, burnt crispiness to it. So good. I have a good one, It is now. My face is so red. It's redder over time. How? It honestly looks redder on camera than in person. What am I drinking? Green salsa. Pretty good. I love the salsas. So you're just drinking the salsa. Yeah. Ooh. If you come here and you get the sauce, just know that the sauce is enough to feed like 10,000 people. So you should come with friends and you should get one of these. It's 10, only 55 cents. Or like five errands. MSG on crap, y'all. But it says the future now available in vanilla and cookies. Yeah, future ice cream. But ice cream is now is long dead. Not with us anymore. Do you think he's nice? Yes. You want these? They're nice and furry, just like you like. What am I ready for? You're a joke. You're a mess. 42 ounces. 42 standard. Ounce. Okay. It's so cheap. It's all the haze in the air. It is all the haze in the air. The 
potentially our most exciting dining experience of the day was at Tire Shop Taqueria. The atmosphere was simply amazing. We went late at night, and as soon as we rounded the corner, we saw the smoke just floating up towards the dark sky. The lights underneath the tents, under which all the grilling and the tortilla action was happening, it was just a sight to behold. The line was long, but not too long, and honestly, I've never been happier to be on a line before. Everyone was just getting ready to order, and everybody was just standing around or on top of their cars, eating, enjoying. The atmosphere, 10 out of 10. Do you remember what that hero means? It's just like that style with Unfortunately, after all, we still don't drive and we had to call an Uber back because everybody was eating on top of their cars or they had some place to be. We had no tables, nothing. So. Uber it was, back to the hotel. And don't worry, we're never flying it because it's impossible to get good points. Literally, you just have to pay $30,000 for it. I want to eat now. Okay, well, I have good news for you. of our labor tonight. Did it survive the Uber ride there? Uh, somewhat, yes. The avocado sauce was a little pressed, but it's still hot, it's still fresh. Nice. We emergency transported this back. Uh, I believe we got Uber. chorizo and cabeza for the tacos. Yes, we literally spent more on one-way Uber than the total for this. Sucks that we don't drive. Mm, very creamy avocado sauce. Ooh, very spicy too. How's the tortilla? Very they were handmade. Yeah. It's very soft. It's like so soft. One of the softest tortillas I've ever had. Mmm. I love this also. Absolutely. A really, really classic good street taco. I think the tortilla is what's standing out to me. Again, how just really fresh and like soft. Yeah. Pliable I and delicate it, it is. It's really good. Yeah. And I just tear a little piece. Sure. All right, your turn to try the taco juice. The tortilla itself smells like it has MSG in it. Interesting. You've been smelling a lot of MSG around today. It's just because the food is good, you know? When the food is flavorful, you smell the MSG because it's monosodium glutamate, all proteins have it. So you're smelling savoriness is what you are. You're mm -hmm. smelling umami. Not mm -hmm. necessarily that it has MSG. Ooh. Dude, that is so rich. With yeah, the, the avocado sauce is super rich. The avocado and the brain meat, the head meat, mm. that is fat on fat. The avocado is fat, the pork is fat, rich, creamy, just like It is animal grease. It's such a rich taco. One of the richest ones I've ever had. I need a radish. The head meat goes really well with the salsa verde. Mm -hmm. It makes it liven up. Makes me taste the pork more. Makes me taste the meat more over the fattiness. The red salsa kind of muddies it, but to each their own. Yeah. I'm a red salsa guy. I need some freshness in my life. They're both fresh salsas. It tastes fresh. That's a spicy sauce though. <sighs> yeah. And last that was chorizo and it was a No, very... no, this is the chorizo because I just ate a scrap and it's yeah. delicious. There is so much avocado sauce on this. It looks so good, Aaron. 
a little pieces of ground up meat, crispy, crispy, crunchy, creamy, avocado everywhere. Okay. Chorizo bite from the avocado side. Yeah, I definitely like this one more because the chorizo pieces are crumbly, little crispy bites. I accidentally dropped some of the chorizo filling into the salsa, so we're just Bit gonna taste that salsa chorizo mix. It's almost like soup. Hope you're prepared for this heat, dude. Is the red, oh, is is. The red spicy? Mm hmm. All right, good luck. I'm dipping in the green with my radish. Oh, right yeah. Now. Gotta love that chorizo, man. Was chorizo your favorite taco filling? Yes. Okay. That was but easy. I also like like your, yeah, you know, all my organ meats. Mm -hmm. The chorizo is also salty and spicy, which I think helps with the fattiness. The head meat yeah. didn't really have that. Exactly. Is it better with the green salsa? Mm -hmm. Is it better with the red salsa? That's the great thing about Mexican food is all the condiments are amazing. And the more condiments you put on, the better it tastes. Can't go wrong. And I love the tortillas. They are so soft, lush. This one? It's not. That's a crispy. Should I reveal? Reveal the vampiro. Wow. This is um, asada. asada, which I think is just like beef, right? Real beef, yeah. Crunch mm. for days. Not That's... just crunch. What's hitting me first is this was grilled, the tortilla. And there's some amazing smokiness there, yeah. infused with smoky goodness. That whole white layer is cheese? I think so. Wow. I just want to take a bite of this top. Oh my god. It is like a tortilla chip cooked on the fire. It tastes like fire. Yeah. It tastes like very carcinogenic, but deliciously gas. <laughs> but man, that is just a pure taste of, oh, and there's a bit of chorizo in here. Nice bonus chorizo. Mm. The bottom tortilla is way thicker than the top tortilla. The top tortilla is crisp, shattery, like a tortilla shell or a tortilla chip. And this one is more like a tortilla shell on the bottom. That meat is smoky, that tortilla is smoky. Just everything smoky. I mean, I love the fire, but it can be a bit too much. But if you like fire, you're gonna love this. Oh, look at that. Do you think that's cheese? You should eat it. Yeah, that's cheese grilled on there. Oh yeah, pure cheese. Eat it. Meat stuck to that bite. Oh man, that's the bite right there. Fire grilled cheese. Only one bite per taco. With meat glued to it. Yeah, that's the one. Everybody look for that bite when you go here. So June, Tire Shop Taqueria, what do you rate it? The experience was amazing. Would you go back? Yes. Just know there's nowhere to eat there. You'll be standing or you'll be bringing it back to your hotel. Or maybe you drive, not maybe like you drive. useless New Yorkers. Maybe you eat in your car, on the hood of your car, but probably you'll do something different than us. I hope. Which one's your favorite taco? Um, I'm thinking what my favorite taco of the day is. I thought I would like this place the most because mm -hmm. it just seems so fun and like authentic and a mm -hmm. cool vibe. Mm -hmm. Of course, Sonora Taco was just sort of like, you know, a storefront. But I feel like they were pretty even, honestly. Mm. Yeah. This one was good, but the ultra fatty richness of the avocado and everything sort of put me off hmm. a little bit. Do you, is this your favorite taco from yeah, there? Yeah, I think I think I do like the vampiro the most from there because it's the most interesting. Super crispy, mm -hmm. but almost a little too crispy. I just feel like they're going so heavy on like things like crispiness, fattiness. You know, it's just extreme. I like it. I like it extreme. You, though. June likes the extremes. If I could have one for the experience, I would go to this one. Uh huh. But yeah, they're tacos. Both are delicious. You cannot lose. Yeah, this wasn't a competition. It's just all we happened to eat today. There's 
a ten thousand and two tacos in LA. So Delightful. I counted exactly ten thousand two. The nightmare of Trump. <laughs> I mean, just watching them grill, yeah. just watching the meat and the fat sizzle and flame up. I think the meat is probably the best thing here, honestly. But they just cover. I like it. the tortillas too. They cover the meat in like so much. I like, love it. Yeah. I love this. It's extra in the best way possible. All right. I also just love the way that I could watch the smoke furl up into the sky and curl towards people and away and wagging its way through the crowd. It's a great nighttime experience. It was just like almost spiritual. After the tacos, Aaron went off to shower, but of course I could not resist. Those Japanese snacks that we got on discount were just calling my name. We got the snack at the Japanese Mart today, and uh, I'm very excited to try it. It has instructions on how to open the bag, but it is... I'm hungry. We found it for a dollar, which was insane. I think it's because it's close to expiration date, so they were just like kind of on clearance. I have no idea what any of this is, but it's mostly rice-based snacks. My favorite. They're crunchy, but soft crunchy. They have such intense umami. A little bit of soy, a little bit of seaweed, slightly different variations of crunch. I think some have a peanut in them, like this one. Oh yeah. And this one. Probably also has a peanut in it. There's also little tiny fishies in here. Fishies. They're kind of sweet and candied on the outside. They have little sesame attached to them. More rice snacks. What can I say? I'm a fiend for these. They have a delightful texture to them. Really nice surface area for exposure of crispiness and spiciness. If packing peanuts had more flavor and more texture and more fat, 